Hey, we're outside today, out of the test kitchen and into the grilling action. Prime rib on the big green egg. So we've done prime rib inside before and where we use an oven and that's great for the winter time and you wanna take advantage of prime rib during the holidays, but it's beautiful outside. Take advantage of the flavor of the grill. In this case, we're gonna use a big green egg and go low and slow for a while. So we reverse sear prime rib. So let's get started. Equipment wise, I've got natural lump charcoal loaded in a large big green egg. I've got hardwood, which would be a hickory and apple wood. I've got a thermometer probe. I also have some of these fire starters that are really handy. And I have a diffuser called a convector wrapped in foil. Let's talk about the ingredients. Certified Angus beef brand prime rib. Prime rib doesn't necessarily mean prime. It just means a bone in rib roast, right? So this is a bone attached rib roast. In this case, it's half of a full rib roast. So it's got three bones on it and a full would have seven. So this is cut almost in half. This one is particularly a strip end rib roast, meaning right here at this face cut, the next this way would be strip loins or strip steaks. This side, as you can see, it's got this extra muscle on it. This would head toward the chuck. Let's talk about quality. Marbling, inside the lean, look for the abundance of those white flecks. That's the best indicator of quality. Now that we picked the perfect roast, let's go ahead and get the grill fired up. First thing you wanna do is put the charcoal in the big green egg. In this case, I have natural lump charcoal up to about the, uh, the top of the first ceramic ring is what you need to do. And then we're gonna put some fire starters in there so I can light those in a minute. So I'm gonna put those strategically in a couple places. And then on top, I'm gonna to put some of this hardwood. For the flavor, this can enhance the, uh, the prime rib a little bit with a little kiss of smoke from hickory and apple, which I like the most. And then we'll light the, uh, the little fire starters. These don't use lighter fluid and that's important. You never put lighter fluid in a ceramic grill. I'm gonna make sure these hardwood is uh, evenly placed on top of the coals. The idea here, guys, is that we're gonna go for a very low heat. I'm gonna choke this down to about a 325 degree grill is my goal. So once those coals get started, I'm gonna put a diffuser plate in called the convector, okay? So this thing just rests on top. This will help diffuse the heat and make sure that the prime rib rides at a nice, slow, low temperature. So the convector goes on there. And I, I put foil on top because there's a lot of fat on this prime rib and that'll continue to drip and render, okay? And I don't want a lot of that to be on that plate. You don't have to do it. I just think it's an easy way to clean up later is putting foil on the diffuser plate. And then we'll put our grate on. And because I want to know uh, the temperature of this grate and the temperature of the prime rib, I'm going to use this handy uh, probe. So I'm going to clip the probe strategically on the side here. And that'll take a temperature of this area. So we're going to close this and get the temperature right where we want it to about 325 degrees. So I've got an inch or two open at the bottom vent. So I'm going to get the regulator just about a quarter turn open, just so there's a little smile, a little air to let out. While that's heating up, let's go ahead and get our prime rib ready for the grill. Salt and pepper generously over the whole prime rib. I'll do a little bit of rubbing into it. So I'm using coarse kosher salt, fresh cracked pepper generously on the whole surface. Make sure you get all the sides. If you find that the seasoning isn't sticking that well, you can put a little bit of oil on top of the prime rib before you put the seasoning on. I felt like it was a little bit tacky, so it was the perfect surface to go ahead and add the seasoning to. Nice and generous on all sides, and then we'll get it right into the grill. I Make sure I burp my grill, open it up. I'm gonna go bone side down, because that acts as another diffuser. And then halfway through, we're gonna rotate this and put a thermometer in to get an internal read of it. For, for now, dead center, right in the middle, bone side down, and close it up. It's about a nine pound roast, which is gonna take about two and a half hours of cooking time. So we'll baby the temperature to maintain that 325 for about an hour to an hour and a half before we rotate it and put our thermometer in it. 
It's been an hour and 15 minutes, so I'm gonna rotate the prime rib and then open it. Oh, she's looking good. We'll rotate it 180 degrees, and I'm gonna put the probe in, targeting the tip right to the center of the roast. Make sure that's got room. Close it up. You probably saw the color on the outside. That's the smoke penetration with the charcoal that we're really taking advantage of with the big green egg. We're gonna take the internal temperature to 110 degrees, and then we're gonna get this thing raging hot to get a good sear on the outside. It's been two and a half hours riding at a temperature between 325 and up to 350 at times. I was able to choke it down and keep a general temperature of 325. Now we wanna get it ripping hot. So I'm gonna open it up, get the flames raging, and get a good sear on the outside. Burp it, open it all the way up, open up the vents down below, all the way to really get it ripping hot. I'm gonna leave it open just a little bit to get good air circulation, and then we're gonna close it, open all the vents. So we've got an internal temperature of 110 degrees on this roast, and we're gonna get that up to about 120, 125. So with only about 10 minutes of time at raging hot heat, I'm able to get a great sear on the outside. Let's take a look. Exactly what we're looking for. So we've got some crispiness that happened here where that split open between the muscles. We got good caramelization on the outside and our temperature gently rose to about 125 degrees. So let's pull it off and let it rest before we slice into this beauty. Take the probe out so I can carry it over to a board. Oh yeah. It's important to let it rest about 10 to 15 minutes to let those juices redistribute so that you cut into it right away, you're gonna have those juices flow all over the place. You want that juiciness to be in every bite. Before slicing it, I'm gonna take a final temperature to see where we landed with our carryover cooking. So carryover cooking is the amount of temperature rise you have between the point you took it out and the continual rise toward the end when you're gonna slice it. So I'm at 135 degrees. So that's my target for a medium rare to medium. If you're looking for something more rare or more well done, take a look at your favorite doneness here. Oh, let's slice into this beauty. Can't wait to see what this looks like. Oh, that looks so good. Look at those juices running down, delicious. With reverse sear, we were able to get perimeter to perimeter doneness with a good sear on the outside. Let us know what you'd like to see next in our test kitchen videos.